Remember that restoration takes community. It takes faith. It takes work. It takes planning. Uh, and, and it sometimes is difficult and messy. But the end reward is ultimately uh, so, so worth it uh, when we think of it. In a small scale, let me give you an example. I like to think of the restoration of all things almost like a yard. There is a plan uh, that God is trying to implement. This is a map of my own yard. My wife and I uh, uh, bought a dream lot to try to build our dream home to raise our dream family and our own little uh, uh, part of the vineyard in, in our stewardship. And this is us laying out where, how, what we're going to do with the yard and where the house sits and where we're going to put our garden boxes and, and some play areas for the kids and some beautiful trees and shrubs and how we're going to do the sprinkler system and things like that. But we have a plan to start. That's our overview of the plan. But this is what the yard looked like <laughs> um, in the beautiful Rocky Mountains of Utah. Uh, that was our yard. There were so many weeds. Where do you even begin? I mean, it's one thing to say to the kids, hey, kids, let's go out and pull some weeds. It's another thing to say, hey, kids, let, let's go down and try to chop down a forest of weeds. And this is us dragging our kids out one day to make them go work with us in the mud and the dirt to try to establish this plan uh, that we have. And me sitting on the back of this old, standing back there, this old beater truck as our kids are filling the bed through, full of weeds and chucking them to me. Uh, that's a lot of work. We even put our little kids to work. You know, hey, you, you can walk. Here's a little shovel. Start to rake some rocks and help us out here. Look how rocky and weedy and dirty that soil is. But little by little, we clear out the weeds and we bring in some retaining walls and and I pull my kids out and I say, let's put in a sprinkler system. And, and they're out there helping me. As you can see, my little son there was so excited to be part of this great work. And we're out there in the heat of the day and the dirt trying to make it happen. After the first year or so, we got the front yard in. We got that down. We tamed the weeds. We conquered those problems. We established that portion of the plan. We even put in some little trees, as you can see here, to hope they grow into beautiful shade trees. But look at our backyard. Goodness gracious, the, those sunflowers are not purposeful, even though they might be beautiful. Look at all those weeds. Look at all that work we still have to do. Now, the question that I just want to pose right here to you is, should we give up? Should we not continue on and try to tackle that area of, of the yard? Uh, should we say, no, it's good. We've got this nice front yard. Or should we continue on in the plan? Or should we say, we hate the whole yard because it's not all beautiful and perfect because there's weeds and areas that are not right. No, we hold to what we have, we establish that front yard, and then we keep on working and tackle that backyard and, and knock down those weeds and put in those walls. And, uh, and by the way, you can see some of this. I hired a friend of mine who had tools that I didn't have and had skills that I didn't have to knock down all the weeds in the backyard and to level it out and to spread the dirt and to, to dig me my trenches. And I relied on other people. Uh, to help me because it takes community. And then we went back to work and I did the things that I could do and we laid those sprinklers and eventually we got the grass down and, and I uh, put in a basketball court because basketball is the celestial game. That is not church doctrine. That's Anthony's sweat doctrine. And little by little, then my wife was like, I want to make this rock wall beautiful. And we put a little plan there and she sat down with a landscape design expert and they showed us what plants and trees and shrubs to plant where. My wife went to work on this portion, and, and that's her working away and putting it together to try to make our own little Eden back there in our, in our little slice of heaven. And at the end of the day, after years and years and years of work, we, we have our little slice of heaven. We have our little Eden in our backyard uh, that's so beautiful that we enjoy, and our kids can be out there and play together and, and as a family. And one time I was sitting back there with my wife, and and we were just kind of enjoying some of the fruits of our labor, and, and I was, kids were playing. And then I still looked in the corner, by the way, and this is one of the trees growing, and that green stuff at the bottom should not be there. There are still areas where we haven't finished, where we need to still root them up and pull out weeds and put weed barrier down and put rocks down and clean it up and trim it up and, and make it into the full plan that we want. Well, you guys can see the connection there. Uh, the restoration of all things, uh, and part of that, the restoration of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, is like re restoring a yard. There is a plan. There is a goal. 
there are a lot of good things that are growing that we have a lot to be grateful for. But there are also weeds that need pulling, and there's upkeep, and there's work to do, and there's portions that are yet undone uh, that need to be addressed. And the Lord will help us and labor with us.